Finance is brought to you by the Consumer Education Division of the Wright Legacy Group. Speaking of which, we have Austin Wright here, um, one of the leaders at the Wright Legacy Group. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. And you are the in-house expert on Medicare. That is correct. And this is October, mm -hmm. so that time is coming. And really, Medicare can be complicated, but it doesn't have to be scary. Total yep. pun intended. <laughs> so tell us a little bit there. I know that there is, for Medicare, what age would you apply? Do you get it automatically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, typically, when you're turning 65, as when you will transition on to Medicare, um, there's a seven-month period around your birth month okay. where you can apply um, and, and get on uh, to Medicare. So you um, definitely have to apply. It's mm -hmm. not something that just that's, comes in the that's mail. That's correct, okay. yes. And you actually apply through the Social Security office. Ah. So you can either do that here locally or you can go online um, to Medicare.gov or the Social Security website and Great. find out or find the, where the links to sign up and everything there. Which our office certainly encourages people to do, mm -hmm. to go on the Social Security website anyway, yes. regardless <laughs> of age, yeah. and get registered for a, a plethora, plethora of reasons. Yeah, yeah. There's all yes. kinds of different resources that you have available to you there. Um, but yeah, so typically it's right when you're turning 65. Okay. Um, even if you're still working, a lot of times, if even if you're going to keep your company insurance, mm -hmm. your company will ask you to go and apply for Medicare. That way, Medicare is your, would technically still be your primary mm -hmm. uh, insurance that you have, and the, uh, uh, the work uh, insurance would be secondary at that point. Okay. So this, I know that, I, I know just enough to ask a couple questions. Sure. <laughs> and you can <laughs> pad the rest of it for me. But we have a um, window of opportunity mm -hmm. or of enrollment coming up. Yes. So let's say I turn, and it's October through, I think, the yes, beginning so of December? Yes, so it starts October 15th, okay. and it goes through December 7th. Gotcha. And that's where you can either sign up for Medicare or make some changes to your Medicare coverage. Mm -hmm. That will then be effective starting January 1st. Gotcha. So you said 65. So mm -hmm. let's say I turn 65 in January. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that I have to wait, or is that just that window is just for changes? Yes. So the open enrollment period is just for people that are that need to make changes to their current gotcha. coverage. Okay. Yeah. You when you're turning 65, you have a three month period before the month of your birth, and then the three month period afterwards. So Perfect. a seven month window to get that initial sign up completed. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You probably said that, and I just <laughs> I, I was thinking about that. That yeah, change yeah. window. Yeah, so the, the, the open enrollment period really is uh, a matter of whether you have a Medicare Advantage plan mm -hmm. or if you need to make changes to your drug plan. Okay. Um, so the Advantage plan is, is one way that you can get Medicare. It's where you continue to work with a private insurance company mm -hmm. to have insurance coverage after you turn 65. Okay. Um, and it operates more or less similar to the coverage that you currently have before you uh, reach uh, 65 where there's co-pays, deductibles, there might be some ad additional benefits, thing of that nature, mm -hmm. but you're doing it with a private company. Gotcha. Um, the other way that you can have Medicare is what's called uh, traditional Medicare, mm -hmm. um, and that's where you uh, get into Part A, your Part B, um, and everything like that, and where you would need to add a drug plan on, on top of that as well. And then a lot of people add what's called a supplemental plan to help offset some of those costs that are associated with Medicare gotcha. um, and everything as well. So, uh, but the open enrollment period is if you have a Medicare Advantage, mm -hmm. you can change which company you're working with during that period of time for the next next year. Okay. Um, or if you have a drug plan and as things can happen, life changes and your mm -hmm. prescription needs change, yeah. you can make an adjustment if needed to your prescription drug coverage um, for the upcoming year okay. as well. So is Medicare like an umbrella and then you can choose a company <clears> underneath? Um, that is more like uh, the uh, Advantage, Advantage plan, okay. yeah, to where they kind of bundle everything into one, mm -hmm. one place mm -hmm. um, and you choose the company and you choose the premium uh, for that year, the coverage that you would have for that year. Oh. Um, and then you would be able to make that an adjustment to a different company the following year if you need to. Um, if you go with traditional Medicare, then your coverage and everything is, is set for everybody regardless of where they live and, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Your premiums are the same. Uh, based upon your income, things of that nature, uh, for that for that year, uh, and your coverage pretty much is is always going to be the same. All right. um, and so, for example, with traditional Medicare, Part A is hospitalization coverage. So, right. if you were admitted into the hospital, that's the part of Medicare that helps cover those costs. Uh, well, there is a sixteen hundred dollar deductible for each benefit period for having Part A. Now, most people, if you've worked forty quarters which most people have, right. that's a decade, yeah. um, they, then Part A is free. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. You don't have to pay a premium for that. Okay. Um, that's and, in my budget. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's good. Uh -huh. um, the second part, which is part B, is uh, like outpatient care, okay. primary care doctor, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, and that one has a, a deductible of uh, $226, and that's for the whole year. Oh, okay. And so if you, once you meet that deductible, you're and they good. don't even have to pay that all at once, right? It's like any other. Yeah, thing. if you like go and there's a fifty dollar copay, right. that would count towards that. Gotcha. Um, but then once you hit that number, then that mm -hmm. that goes away. Um, I know some of our seasoned folks are very going to be on a very very detailed budget yeah. and income, <laughs> so I just wanted them yeah. to know you yeah. don't have to pay that all. Yeah, at yeah. Time. And then yeah. Um, the uh, the other part of, of Part B is um, it, that one does have a premium. Okay. Um, and so right now for 2023, that that premium is $164.50. Mm -hmm. um, that usually is adjusted each year, um, as well as the deductibles that you have associated with Part A and Part B can be adjusted each year. Um, they haven't put the numbers out yet for sure. 2024, um, but we usually can expect at least a couple of dollar increase, you know, expect it to be around 170, 175 for, for 2024. B. Yes, Okay. for Part right. B. Mm -hmm. And then there's D? Yes, so Part D, the alphabet soup of Medicare. Right, right, truly. <laughs> Part D is the easiest one to remember, though, because it's D for drugs. Gotcha. So D, uh, Part D is, is your drug plan. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a Medicare Advantage, that could be a part of, of that already. Oh, okay. um, But on, if you have traditional Medicare and you mm -hmm. have a Part A and a Part B, then you will also need to add the Part D, mm -hmm. and that is for your prescriptions. That is, again, through a, a separate standalone company right. uh, like Anthem, uh, Humana, different places like that that offer those, those types of plans. Um, and that would be based upon your prescription needs. If you're not taking that many medications, mm -hmm. there's some that are you know, $10, $15 a month mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure that if you do need something, you can get a generic version of it and you're covered. Sure. Um, you'll want to get it. Uh, even if you aren't, you're currently on many, very many, many medications, because mm -hmm. if you don't, there's a, a two percent penalty oh. <laughs> for not having it. Really? Um, and so you want to make Those sure you sign penalties. up. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you want to go ahead and sign up anyway, because sure. that penalty carries with you for life. You and can't is there a, pay it back. a standard cost for D? It just depends on the company you go with okay. and your prescription needs. Okay. So if you're on a lot of medications, mm -hmm. you may want to pay a little bit more each month, mm -hmm. because it will give you better coverage for your prescription needs. Gotcha. So. I guess if I was in that situation, and I will be in a few years plus, um, I'd, I would have to choose between Medicare Advantage and mm -hmm. regular Medicare with those supplements. Yes. What would be a, a strong deciding factor? Would it be health? Would it be financial? Mm -hmm. what, would, what would make me lean one way or the other? Yes. So uh, we typically, if you're planning out your Medicare cost or your right. medical coverage cost in the future, if you really want to know how to budget and know how much it's going to cost, mm -hmm. you're going to want to go with traditional Medicare. Gotcha. Uh, the reason is is because it's a defined cost. You know, mm -hmm. at least for a year, mm -hmm. how much it's going to cost you for your for your premiums each month, how much your drug plan will cost. Um, if you want to get the supplement to help cover some of the deductibles and coinsurance and things of that nature, you have a rough idea each month. Okay, well, if I pay this much each month in my premiums, mm -hmm. then out of pocket, I'm only going to be out, you know, the Part B deductible of the 226 sure. in addition to that. Yeah, it's so it's pretty easy to budget, to budget yeah. uh, and plan for. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that income that's important. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and knowing how to do that, that works really well. Mm -hmm. uh, some people like the benefits is when they're younger uh, of going with the advantage because oftentimes it is cheaper month over month okay. because if you have a medical incident mm -hmm. you're going to be bearing a lot more of those costs gotcha. you, the pass through uh, you know the coinsurance rates and everything like mm -hmm. that are usually um, a lot harder <laughs> or a lot higher excuse me sure. uh, you know it with traditional Medicare it's an 80 20 coinsurance okay. if you add a supplement on top of that the supplement plan actually covers that 20 percent so you could be zero dollars out of pocket mm -hmm. Um, for that medical incident as to where if you're on an Advantage plan, it's going to be a higher co cost out of pocket for you, even though you were paying lower premiums. But that's kind of the, the, the difference. Right. Um, the biggest thing that we always talk to people, though, about is health-wise, mm. because once you're on a me if you start at 65 on an Advantage plan, if you want to switch back to traditional Medicare, which is something you can do during open enrollment, Perfect. it's based upon your health. You ah. can make the change over but the supplemental part that can help offset some of those additional costs, like the deductibles, things sure. of that nature, can only be done if you're healthy enough to, to get really? covered. So they come into your house and do all, like a life insurance? No, it's not like a life insurance. Okay, that, it, it, it's more <laughs> just a, a medical questionnaire gotcha. that you would answer. Okay. Um, it's not a full, uh, you know, a full medical, uh, but it's more of have you, ha have you been 
to the doctor or have you been diagnosed with something, mm -hmm. things of that nature that, that you would maybe not qualify for the supplemental part, mm -hmm. switching back to traditional Medicare. Gotcha. Um, and that can, that can be costly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so you said, oh, I'm healthy, but now if something happens, I want to switch back to where I have better coverage, but you can't quite get there. Yikes. And so um, you, uh, you're stuck paying higher out of pocket um, than you would have been in to begin with. And right. so most of the time, if your budget can afford it, we recommend, okay, you're going to be paying a little bit more up front, but now you have it mm -hmm. and you can keep it. And so you can always uh, make, make those changes. But even if you do go with med uh, traditional Medicare mm -hmm. and you are healthy, if you want to switch which company you're getting your supplement from, you can also do that at any time. It's sure. just based upon your health at that so time. So Medicare well. A, B, and D, that's mm -hmm. a part of Medicare and yes. then supplement, is that something different? Yes, so, so the Medicare supplement or Medigap plan, Medigap. as some people okay. call it, I think I've heard that. Is, um, is, is offered by a traditional insurance company. Okay, um, like but, Blue Cross or Yeah, Blue somebody? Cross okay. or Aetna or Cigna or different mm -hmm. places like that that offer um, those plans and it fills in, that's why they call it the Medigap, sure. it fills in the gaps um, that Medicare doesn't cover. So okay. that, the deductible that you would have if you were hospitalized it will cover that. Mm. Um, you know, your coinsurance that you would have to pay, the 20% coinsurance, it covers that also. Um, and then on Part B, once you meet that annual deductible, it covers those same things, the 20% coinsurance, things of that nature. Okay. And so it's a more comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. um, but again, based upon your financial situation, you'd have to look at, at, at your current health, also your current financial state, sure. uh, to make sure that you're making the right decision for so what you need to do. So if Medicare pays 80 mm -hmm. and I pay 20, I still would want to consider a supplement to help me with that 20? Yes. Because depending on my health, Depending on your health severe. and depending on, you know, if you have a medical incident where you're put into the hospital, right. that can be 10 to $20,000 very easily. Yeah, aspirin's what, fifty dollars? Yeah, <laughs> and so and so if you look at it that way, then you're like, okay, well, you know, if, if an incident were to happen where I were to be hospitalized mm -hmm. for for whatever reason, you know, that's a, a, a multi thousand dollar bill. Mm -hmm. Twenty percent of that can be significant. Sure, especially you know, once yeah. again on the yeah. set. And income. then if if you know something where you have cancer treatments or mm -hmm. things of that nature that you have to do on a regular basis, that is not cheap. And right. so that 20%, even though it's way less than the total bill, mm -hmm. that 20% can add up significantly. Right. And that if you're on a fixed budget, that can, that can hurt you. And so paying some additional money each month helps offset that future large cost. Sure. And something um, I've heard you and um, your dad, Steve Wright, talk about in Social Security workshops is mm -hmm. you want to look also at the genetics in your family, Correct. how long people live. Yeah. I mean, I know those are hard things, but if heart disease runs in your family, mm -hmm. you need to look at that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Those types that'd of things. That'd be something that you would want to consider for sure is just, okay, well, let's go ahead and lock in what we know we're going to have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, you and, can't and just project getting hit by a bus, but you can, no. pro you can project <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, genetics things and stuff. within so, reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and even, even being healthier, yeah, you know, if everybody in your family's healthy and they all die in, in parasailing yeah, like 200, accidents or whatever, right, you know, yeah. then it's, it's never, you know, whatever, like, mm -hmm. okay, well, then maybe that's a, that's a factor where you could maybe hold off for a little while sure. or get one that's, uh, you know, there, there are different plans that you can do, like a high deductible plan mm -hmm. with traditional Medicare where your out-of-pocket is kind of capped at like $2,000 or something like right. that, and then um, you would be on the hook after that. So gotcha. it would just be a matter of what your situation is financially and health wise mm -hmm. and kind of figuring out what uh, what direction would be the best for you to go well, it, it sounds kind of from this seat <laughs> slightly intimidating sure. um i'm at a huge advantage because i work in an office with folks <laughs> like you who i can just knock on your door and and have questions and i'm believe me i i know how lucky i am but um someone who's just turned 65 mm -hmm. And so if they call the Social Security office, mm -hmm. make an appointment to talk about Social Security, I'm sure, and Medicare, are they going to get all of this information? They'll get some general information, like the, the number the deductible is, things like that. Right. But actually planning through is the best scenario for them. Mm -hmm. They won't really give advice. Okay. All they can do is say, hey, here's a way that you can find more information. Mm -hmm. You know, like, for example, with the Advantage plans, they won't really tell you anything about those type of plans. Right. They'll just point you kind of in a direction uh, to, like, be able to find 
someone <laughs> sure. to help you do that, sure. you know, and then uh, in terms of just they, they can tell you the basics of what part A, part B are going to be for this period of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the, in the planning scenario of, of being able to holistically look at your life scenario right. that you're currently in and making the decision about, okay, which direction would be the best for you, mm -hmm. uh, they usually won't offer that type of advice there um, just because they, you know, that they have other things they're working sure. on. And, and the only thing that they're allowed to do right. is, is more they're just share. They're scripted somewhat, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. They're allowed to do really is just say, okay, well, this is what Part A covers. Mm -hmm. Different things well, like I'm that. sure it would be giving advice, and yes. that's not really their role. Yeah. They're yeah. like, here are the facts. <laughs> yes. And, and, and I'm not mad at them because that's their job. Uh, yeah, you know, absolutely. Just to make you aware. Mm -hmm. But I do highly, and I, I promise you this is not a pitch or, per, or trying to pronounce, <laughs> but I genuinely, genuinely encourage people to talk to someone. Absolutely. Probably you, but, you know, <laughs> um, just because I know how good you yeah. are. But it, it's super important because we, yes. we did a, your dad wrote a script recently for us for some radio mm -hmm. advertising, and he made a very good point, and maybe you had a hand in it, that what's good for your friend yep. may not work for you. Yep. You know, Susie, who you have coffee with every Thursday, mm -hmm. may have just gone through the process, but her, she may have a lot of different factors. Mm -hmm. So, oh, Susie got this, this, and this. That works for her. I'm going to do the same thing. But that's yeah. not necessarily true. Yeah, it doesn't always, it don't always uh, work for you to take Susie's plan. Right. <laughs> you know, because you and Susie could be very different people in, a diff in different ways. You know, yes. she might be a type 1 diabetic. Yes. She needs to do something, or, you know, and to you're not. And so it might be, you know, to a disadvantage for you to mm -hmm. say with the drug plan to go with a company that maybe costs more when you don't really need that. Right. And so you'd need to really kind of fine tune and hone yeah, in on it, what exactly it needs to be, needs to be a yours. good fit mm -hmm. like a nice jacket you know <laughs> it needs to be a good fit so i plan on working till i'm at least 70 that's the plan Sounds and good. um so if i i still have health insurance mm -hmm. through my employer until i'm 70 you said at 65 i can still go apply for medicare my employer would want that to be my primary insurance, correct? The Medicare? Yes. And theirs would become my secondary? So that it really depends on your employer. Okay. So some employers allow you to stay on their insurance past 65 mm -hmm. um, and then be your primary. Gotcha. Um, and it, in that point, you would only actually need to sign up for Part A because mm -hmm. it would be your secondary at that point. Sure. Because you can, you can actually work past the age of 65 mm -hmm. as long as you have credible coverage. And then once you leave that employer, you can then sign up. Um, with for, uh, for for Medicare at that point and still get what's called a guarantee issue, meaning okay. that any insur any supplements, any drug plans, anything at that time would still be issued to you at that point as long as you had credible coverage the whole time. Sure. And so, but so a lot of employees will ask you to go ahead and sign up because that helps them drop sure. their <laughs> sure. insurance rates and everything yeah. for you, but it still can be available for you and everything like that. Yeah. So. so I'm wondering if I have Medicare and my insurance for my employer, would I still need supplements? It, again, depends on what your employee is willing to cover. It's so complicated. <laughs> and, and, and what right. your employer is willing sure. to cover after you turn 65 mm -hmm. um, and, and what's not. Okay. Um, and so you would still maybe be looking at building out the exact right scenario for sure. you uh, that cost well -fitted wise. jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, it, yeah, that's why it's important to review it uh, mm -hmm. when that time comes to make sure that whatever decision you're making is the right decision at that time. Sure. Uh, and you have a game plan for, for the transition, uh, particularly once you actually leave uh, your, your work. Gotcha. Speaking of transition, so I turned 65. I'm just throwing all these scenarios at you. <laughs> I turned 65, but I've got good health insurance. Mm -hmm. Do I have to apply? Can I wait? So You said something about coverage. Yes. So if your employer is willing to carry you right. still, then you don't have to. Uh, but if you have an individual policy, mm -hmm. you say you're an entrepreneur, you, you own your own business, so you, you have an, just an individual plan, right. um, you cannot carry that into 65. That, oh. you will have, that will end um, at that time. Okay. Um, so it's only if you have coverage through an employer really? that you can maintain uh, indiv your, your life insurance, huh. not life insurance, but your health insurance. Well, that's a whole that different time, component, so. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So if you're, if you're a, you know, like a lot of times real estate agents, mm -hmm. you know, they don't have health insurance. They have just an individual policy. Right. When they turn 65, they have to switch over to Medicare mm -hmm. at that time. And what if they don't? Well, if you don't, then, yeah. uh, one, you're covering yourself, you know, by in, in cash, out of pocket, completely <laughs> right. out of pocket. Um, but also, if you don't sign up, just like with Part D, if you don't sign up for Medicare at mm -hmm. 65, 
uh, when you're supposed to, there's a 2% penalty each year that you delay coverage. Really? And that penalty carries with you again for the rest of your life. And I so, don't like that word penalty. I don't. I know. I know. So yeah. we, we encourage people to do so, yeah. obviously, so that they actually have medical coverage. Sure. But also so they can avoid paying those accrued penalties for the rest of their life. Right, right. Wow. What do they do? Like take it out of your taxes or something? So just They'll what, find it? <laughs> they'll, they'll find a way, yes. <laughs> but no, it's just your record. Uh, mm. will show that you have to pay that additional 2% each year. Oh, uh, when, so you, you, when you start making payments. When you start making payments. So, you, you know, that penalty won't impact you if you never get it. Right. <laughs> but if you never get it and you get sick, yeah. then you're going to, that's going to be a bigger problem. Yes. And you would have been better off having had coverage at that right. time. Well, I'll tell you, I hope there are people watching this that don't know these things because mm -hmm. who's going to tell them? Yeah. You know, there, we ha there are shut-ins, there are mm -hmm. seasoned people that um, don't have adult children or yeah. grandchildren or someone at the church or someone that can tell them because you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping do they start getting bombarded with letters in the mail and yeah, if you uh, if you have a mailing address and you're turning 65, you're going to know that you're turning 65. Okay, from maybe so the supplement company. <laughs> a lot of a lot of the companies yeah. are trying to get yeah, I met a lot of Medicare Advantage plan. Gotcha. Uh, Good. Stuff. Well, that they'll... makes me feel better. Yeah, you will, you will know that you're supposed to be transitioning. Mm -hmm. Now, navigating that transition well, that's a different ball game. It's complicated. But yeah, there's, a, there's enough incentive around getting you to pick the right plan right. at the beginning that companies want you to choose them from the beginning. Yes, Because yes. most, most of the time, people don't change. Once mm -hmm. they set their, their plan up the way that they want to, uh, typically they stick with that for, for quite a while, mm -hmm. except for possibly the, the drug plan yeah. where they make a change as I'd be afraid to go back in to, there. So. I'm like, okay, I did it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm riding it out. Yeah, you know? yeah, but there yeah. may be a point where it would be to my advantage Correct. to go in during yeah. the enro open enrollment. Mm -hmm. I think and that word is, is, just that, is confusing because it's actually changing. It's open changing. Yeah, pr pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it is... Part of the reason they call it open enrollment, though, is mm -hmm. let's say you did decide not to take it at 65. Mm -hmm. Well, the only time after you make that decision from is in the open enrollment period. Gotcha. And so you can't, and you have to wait <laughs> yeah. until January 1st to have coverage. So ah. you can sign up, and it starts the next year. If you miss that window of opportunity, mm -hmm. you have to wait almost a whole year and a half wow. before that While coverage would be able to. Penalty. Well, while accruing that to where when you do start paying it, you're going to be paying yeah. a higher premium. So the open enrollment's October through December uh, 15th? It's October 15th through December 7th. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. October 15th through December 7th. But then it, it's implemented January, January 1. January mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Wow. And that's always, that is yeah, that, that's are those dates year. something that just doesn't yeah, change? Yeah, they haven't. Uh, I think they extended it one year because the 7th, like on the front or back end, mm -hmm. kind of like when, when tax filing day, right. if it lands on a weekend or a holiday okay. or something like that, they'll make those They're adjustments. They're feeling a little generous and yeah. <laughs> give you a little bit more time. Whew. Okay. Wow. I'm looking forward to turning 65. Let me tell you. <laughs> I know um, personally that the Right Legacy Group does um, workshops every month. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that we've talked about planning a Medicare workshop. Do we have that on the schedule? Um, I believe we have talked about doing it uh, uh, either late November or first okay. part of December. All right. So what I encourage folks to do is go to writelegacy.com, mm -hmm. click on newsletters, and yeah. every month we have the new newsletter in there, and it'll tell them what workshops are coming up. Yeah. If yeah. you're interested in the Medicare, you're going to be interested in the Social Security, mm -hmm. all of those things. And once again... By nature, I am promoting the Wright Legacy Group and Stephen Austin Wright because I've been with them for 15 years. I believe in them. I know they're good at what they do. But find someone, if, if it's not the Wright Legacy Group, find someone to give you good, solid advice, a professional, and we put that on everything we print. Yeah. Find a professional, get professional advice. Guys, there's a lot of options out there for Social Security, mm -hmm. for Medicare, things you don't know. You could really work the system to your advantage legally. Yeah. And um, get the most bang for your buck and keep your pennies in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to share? Are there any changes this year that people need to know about? Um, not in particular. They're, they're, they are starting. One thing that if you've been Googling or looking up anything regarding Medicare right. is, is that the, uh, the government is actually now starting to um, do uh, arrangements with the drug companies oh, okay. to actually negotiate the price of those, of those certain medications. Now, there's... Right. 
they're only doing so many each year to start, uh, but that's going to be something you're going to see make an impact. Um, they, they started with the 10 most utilized <laughs> drugs on that, that okay. people that you I'm have sure utilized. I'm sure some of them were under the diabetes umbrella. Yes. So, yeah, yeah for, for example, that was one. Uh, insulin has been capped at $35 out of pocket. That's um, wonderful. Which is wonderful. For both of us, yes. considering we're both diabetic. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, and so, uh, but then there's other ones that are high usage mm -hmm. um, that they're working with the companies to actually negotiate the price. Wonderful. They hadn't been allowed to do that, so they changed the law mm -hmm. to allow them to be able to make those negotiations. So that can help lower some of the additional cost um, that, that can come. You know, your drug plan might be higher because the company has to pay a higher price. Well, mm -hmm. if we can make that price lower, they might be able to pass that down to where your premiums for those to access those drugs can be, be lower as that well. That would be great. Mm -hmm. And it certainly doesn't hurt to ask your doctor or your pharmacist Absolutely. if there's a generic version yeah. Um, yeah. that you can get on different medications. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's scary. Yeah. You know, I, I worry about yeah. our seasoned folks having what they need. Mm -hmm. You know, some of what you want, but definitely what you need. <laughs> you know, and medication sure. is a large part of that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm afraid we're out of time. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it goes by fast. <laughs> it it's, good in, it's a lot of a lot of information. Yes. Once again, I encourage people to go to rightlegacy.com, and that's just easier to remember than the phone number. <laughs> 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 Click on newsletters. Yeah, Our yeah. contact information is in there. We have workshops all the time, mm -hmm. taxes and retirement, Social Security, Medicare, all different kinds of things. Um, if you have a suggestion or an idea, something you might be interested yeah. in, shoot it at us. Send us an email where all our contact information is there. We'd love to know. Yeah. And Austin, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. I know you are very busy, and I know you're very good at what you do, I'm just saying. <laughs> so I'm Melanie Parker. Thank you all so much. Happy fall, and I will see you next time. Focus on finance.